All right, there have been some questions about G-code relative to slicing and what is slicing? So slicing is when you take your object, which is what we have down here, and then you generate a toolpath that tells the machine how to draw out each incremental layer as it moves upwards in the z-axis. So it's drawing an image in the x and y axis and then slides up the part to make a physical object in the third dimension. And the question comes from, well, when you're trying to slice this part on a printer, all the 3D printers have different slicing engines. Well, back in 2012, MakerBot Industries had an open source platform, and so you could go here to find all the documentation you needed to to get your 3D printer to work or talk to the other 3D printers. And so in the open source movement, everything ran on the same G-code language that CNC machines had been running on for years. So all these machine calls listed would be the same. Uh, this is just calibrating your machine, telling it where zero is and at what extruder rate you're going to run right here, E0, and then following the entire geometry of your object and scrolling through the part. Well, at some point, right, MakerBot Industries got acquired by Stratasys. So these are the most common 3D printing uh, companies today, but right about here, 2012, 2013, um, MakerBot was acquired by Stratasys and their open source information stopped being open source and whatever was left stayed open source, but that open source uh, material then basically got cloned by a million other manufacturers. And so you get these knockoffs in the, uh, in the uh, FlashForge uh, 3D printer, and that was very commonly produced in China. It was called the X-Creator, and then Dremel made one called the, I don't know, the Dreamer or something like that. And you can find a million clones of the Replicator 2 and the Replicator 2X under these subheaders but each one added their own little specific blurp of G-code that made it indecipherable for any other computer. And so all of this garbage at the front is just to make it harder for your machine to understand the G-code that starts right here. And so Simplify 3D took the time to just parse out what crap needs to go in front, and then they add their little boop, and that's what we did. We're a service provider, and then the G-code generation looks just like this, okay? So there's no real distinction beyond that, except that for the Dremel printer that this was sliced for, it needs this pile of garbage beforehand to read it. And so you can try and slice it with Cura, and that was the other open source platform, but Cura and MakerBot have since um, merged, leading to a different problem. So as we go through all of this, you can find um, MakerBot's original firmware, right, the Mighty Board firmware for the Replicator 2 was last updated 10 years ago, shocker, and uh, there were several flavors that the 3D printers were running on, which was Marlin and Sprinter, but you can find them at this location. GitHub has a repository, so anyone who is doing a lot of the open source work posted those files at GitHub so you can work retroactively on old printers, which is why uh, the Replicator 2 that I'm still running on still works strong after a decade of use uh, as long as you maintain calibration. But the G-code path itself is literally just run an X, Y, and Z, and uh, the beginning section will literally have all of your calibration specs. So where does the start of your X, Y axis exist, and where is your Z axis beginning, what is your volume of your, your printer, and then some M codes to tell you commands for heating or um, heated beds.